President. Majority Leader. Mr. President, Senate Democrats and Republicans understand there's more work to do to pass legislation protecting America's security and the security of the Western world. We've made important progress, but negotiations have not been easy, and it's going to take more time. But no matter how long it takes, we must succeed, because the stakes are high for America and for our friends in Europe, the Middle East, and around the world. We must send more aid to Ukraine to defeat Vladimir Putin. We must help our friends in Israel prevent another terrorist attack like October 7th. We must send critical aid to innocent civilians in Gaza. Republicans and Democrats must also continue negotiations on an agreement for securing our southern border. As the past few weeks have made abundantly clear, Democrats have always been willing to engage in good faith, realistic negotiations about border security. We agree the border must be fixed, but not at the expense of our values. Finding common ground on the border has been difficult. In fact, one of the most difficult issues Congress has faced in a good while. The details here matter immensely, and this is not a topic that Congress has tackled at this level in many years. While we've made important progress over the past week on border security, everyone understands that we have more work to do and that's going to take more time. Later today, I'll meet with colleagues at the weekly Democratic Caucus lunch to give an update on border and supplemental negotiations. Now, I thank my colleagues on both sides of the aisle for working without rest on the supplemental package. I also thank staff from both sides who've been working morning, noon, and night to push us forward. Again, we still have more to do. It's not going to be easy, and everyone understands it's going to take more time to figure this out. But we must, we must succeed. Democrats remain committed to working with our Republican counterparts to reach an agreement. On another matter, it'll be a busy day here on the floor with votes on three highly qualified nominees to serve in the administration and on the federal bench. For the information of senators, we'll hold votes today on the nominations of Christopher Fonzone to be Assistant Attorney General, Sarah Hill to be U.S. District Judge for the Northern District of Oklahoma, a member of the Cherokee Nation, Ms. Hill would make history as the first ever Native American woman to serve as a federal judge in the state of Oklahoma. And finally, Elizabeth Richard, to serve as President Biden's coordinator for counterterrorism, a position that has the rank of ambassador at large. Before the Senate adjourns for the holidays, we must also pass a temporary extension of FAA funding, or else funding will run out on December 31st. A funding extension for the FAA is critical for minimizing chaos during the holiday season, so Congress must get this done as soon as we can. Finally, before we leave for the Christmas holiday, the Senate will also finish confirming the last of the military nominees held up by Senator Tuberville. A few weeks ago, the Senate finally confirmed the vast majority of officers and military nominees that were on hold. And at the end of last week, the Senate unanimously passed legislation providing for back pay for all military personnel affected by these damaging holds. Providing back pay for these military families was the very, very least the Senate could do to right this awful wrong. I'm glad we did it. But we're not done yet. There are still 11 nominees that are awaiting confirmation. We'll not leave town until every last one of these delayed nominees is finally confirmed. I hope we can do so quickly. And finally, <clears throat> Mr. President, one of the things I'm best known for in New York is my commitment to visit all 62 counties every year. This year we celebrated our silver anniversary, the 25th year of visiting every one of the 62 counties. And I love it every, much as, every bit as much today as I did in my first year. We finished our tour yesterday morning at, 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 at Columbia Memorial Hospital in Columbia County. When I visit the counties, I learn so much. I talk to people. I listen to their needs. When you're up close with people, you see their hopes and their joys, as well as their fears, their desires, so many different things. And when you sit up close with someone and talk to them and learn from them, it makes a huge bit of difference. You can't do your job as senator unless you are actually in touch with people, not simply talking on the telephone or reading something. 
And so I do it, and I love it. And I commit to the people of New York that I will visit the, every one of the 62 counties next year, each at least for the 26th time. I yield the floor.